The recording. All right. So this is a LinkedIn optimization class, and we are going to cover four different segments, right? On this, in this master class, we're going to look at the basics. We we'll look at setting up, right? How to set up your profile. Um, we look at content because when I looked at the form, a lot of people talked about content, about uh, writing content, how to write good content. And then uh, we're going to do some growth hacks. I mean, people do these things. So yeah, we might as well learn, learn a thing or two, right? Um, so my name is Oluwashi Kende Peters, like I'd said before. How do I minimize this? It's distracting me. Fantastic. Yeah, so I'm a coach, consultant, author. I have um about five books published now. I'm a speaker and I'm a social entrepreneur, but you get to know more about that in subsequent slides. Okay, so about me, a number of people don't know who I am. I mean, I'm depending on what side, whether you're holding the head, you know, the parable of the elephants, depending on whether you're holding the head or the trunk or the side or the leg, different people know different parts of me. So I just thought this would be an opportunity to just share who I am and what I do. And at the core of everything that I do, is building people and institutions, right? So I help individuals and in institutions to maximize their potential. Everything that I do is, you know, centered around this. And yeah, this is <laughs> final slide about me, education, accounting, BSc, MBA in management. Um, mm -hmm. I'm an alumnus of this uh, Lagos Business School, and I have an, another master's degree in fintech and mm -hmm. financial markets where I graduated. Mm -hmm. I'm the CEO of Success HQ Africa, which is my consulting firm. Um, I'm the founder of Pan African Women Empowerment Network. A lot of you know about that. Um, PWN is a not for profit organization that helps um, women with the empowers women with the competence, the confidence, and the connections that they need to start and scale successful businesses. We've, we've been running that for three years and we have operations in about 33 countries, yeah. I'm also the founder of Tech Up Africa, another not-for-profit organization. And what Tech Up Africa does is to empower um, young Africans now, not women alone now, but men and women with the tech skills that they need to lead and lead tech careers or you know, start tech-empowered businesses. And in the last one and a half years, we have helped over, we're going to hit the 1,500 mark in two weeks, and where we've um, given 1,500 people scholarships, access to mentors, coaching curriculum, and access to work placements so that they can start their tech career successfully. I'm a trustee of the Wolfpack Project. Wolfpack Project is a charity based in the UK. And it's a mental health, it's one of the UK's leading mental health charities. Um, I'm a trustee on the board. And I'm also a mentor with Lloyds Bank School of Social Entrepreneurs here in the UK. And I'm also a mentor for the UK government's Help to Growth program. And these are just some of the positions I've held in the past. And it's important that I'm starting with this and I'm going to explain to you why I'm starting with this because this, these are some of the things uh, we are going to talk on about you as you optimize your LinkedIn profile. All right. So here we are. Why LinkedIn? Why, why, why all this fuss about LinkedIn? Why is everybody, especially governor, breathing on my neck that I must, my LinkedIn must be good, right? Ah. LinkedIn has a lot of benefits, right? Especially for anyone who is, whether in career or in business, your LinkedIn profile, when anyone mentions your name, the first thing they'll check for is your LinkedIn profile. In the last two days, the number of people that have viewed my LinkedIn profile, I'm sure because of this masterclass, I just, it's just gone up a, a, a bit higher than you know last week. And understandably, if you're coming for a LinkedIn masterclass, you want to, okay, this person that wants to teach me LinkedIn, let's even see what you know, she has. And so, yeah, so why is LinkedIn important? LinkedIn is important for audience building. As a woman in leadership, one of the things you need to do is to have your own audience. Um, when I do my personal branding coaching, we talk a lot about identifying who you are and identifying who your audience is who your um, 
your audience persona is, and this is important. I'll, I'll explain why when we get into, into the session. It's important for you to know who you are and who you are called to. Like I say, I, as an individual, I'm not called to everybody, right? I'm called particularly to women. And it shows in everything that I do. And that is even why I spend this time with women in leadership. So you need to understand who your audience is and you know what message you're sending to them. LinkedIn is also critical for job, job search, right? I am going to share a particular write-up that I, I just found it whilst I was preparing for this session, right? Um, I think I developed, it was a content I developed and somehow I just never got around to posting it. So I will share it to those who stay till the end of this session. Trust me, that it's a five page carousel, but it has a lot of nuggets that a lot of people do not know. How you can get a job, search for a job without searching for a job, right? And let me say this here, if anybody is here and you're looking for a job, one thing you should please not do on LinkedIn, I've not seen it work for, many people i've not even seen it work for anybody actually and especially if you are in executive leadership never ever put open to work on your linkedin profile i beg in the name of god and i'll explain to you why it does not work right it doesn't work for many people but rather and that's why i have offered to share this that document that shows you how you can use linkedin to get jobs without telling everybody that hey i'm job on team you understand so I'm going to share that. LinkedIn is excellent for networking. I actually think the primary reason for LinkedIn is networking. LinkedIn is for networking. Yes, there's some invites that I would not accept, especially if I look at your profile and I think I can estimate why you want to connect with me. Um, I would not accept it. There's just some, some super, and I'll explain why I do not accept some certain, just one particular person of people. I don't accept invite, but generally anyone that adds me on LinkedIn, um, I'm accepting automatically. And then it helps you to establish credibility. Like I say, in this day and age, there's no role you are going to go for. There's no interview you're going to go for. There's no opportunity. So even if you're a business person, there's no opportunity that you're going to be given. The first thing they'll do is to check your LinkedIn profile. Right. So if your LinkedIn profile is not up to date, you are all actually cutting yourself short from the opportunities that you can get. I'll share some of the opportunities I got with you shortly. All right. And if you also build an organization, before I go and work for anybody, I will check the company out on LinkedIn now. Okay, what are you doing? What are you saying? You know, what are your staff? Who are the kind of people that you have as staff? Right. So if you have an organization, if you're an SME that owns, if you want to have your um, organization page on LinkedIn, because you will not be able to hire the right talent. There are just some people that would, you know, they won't accept your offer if you do not have a good presence on LinkedIn. Right. So it's important as you're building an organization that you should have a LinkedIn page. And then the best part of all of this, so beyond the, the, all the things I've said about is for selfish reasons. And I think the best part of LinkedIn and why LinkedIn is just so valuable is the fact that it helps you, you, you're helping other people by sharing your knowledge, by sharing your experience, you're helping someone. There's just someone out there who you probably will never know. And you know, LinkedIn gives you access to millions of people, people that you never get to see in your lifetime, right? So it's an opportunity opportunity for you to stretch and um, get to meet other people, right? And uh, stretch and then also to help other people. I beg your pardon. As a professional, as a business leader, you need to put yourself out there. And even if all I've said does not move you, even the Bible says it, right? In the book of Matthew chapter five, verses 14 to 16. And it says, a house built on a hill cannot not be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it on a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, women of God, men of God, because I know we have some men in the call, let your light shine before others. So that's why, that they might see your good deeds and glorify your father who art in heaven. All right, um, this was, there was a typo here. So let your light shine. 
let your light shine. LinkedIn is a place to let your light shine. And um, also, I, I do say that LinkedIn is borrowed media. So there are two types of media when it comes to personal branding. So there's media that you own and there's borrowed media. Borrowed media is, I mean, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. You do not own it, but I mean, it's a platform where you are on. As a, as a senior executive, I, and, and I think especially as, the, as we evolve in the technology, so we've moved from web one, and we're in web two and we're transitioning to web three, right? As we transition to web three, um, the platforms will be different, right? LinkedIn is a, you know, we are currently in web two, right? As we move to web three, there'll be newer platforms. So it's important as much as possible for you to have your own, your own website, if you can, and it doesn't cost anything much, if you can. Please have your own website where you also move all your content from LinkedIn. Yes, yes. Where you can move your content, especially your thought leadership content, move them, not, not move them, copy them and have, have a copy on your website. It's important. Uh, we'll talk about that maybe at some. So let me tell you some of the things LinkedIn has helped me to do, right? Um, so um, I got this, I got a speaking engagement, not, and not just any speaking engagement, a keynote speaking engagement with this organization called Help to Grow um, program. Now Help to Grow program is a program run by the UK government itself in association with almost all the business schools in the UK with a primary objective to grow entrepreneurs across UK. It's a massive organization. And from nowhere, somebody just slid into my DM and said, hello, we've seen your profile, we've seen your content, we've seen what you do. We would like you to be a, a keynote speaker at this event. Right. And this was an event that took place, I think about two months ago. I can't even remember. Two months or so ago. And I mean, I was not only the only black person, whether as a speaker, I was the only black person, either as a speaker or as a member of the audience or a participant in that entire conference. And you know what it is for, you know, um, a UK organization to bring, right, a black person as the key, not just a speaker. So there were different speakers. They were over really, really top senior people, but they probably as a keynote speaker, why? Even though, yes, I volunteer, I'm a mentor on that program, the organizers of the conference were totally different from the managers of the, um, so they, as at the time they sent me an invite, they did not even know that I was mentoring a lot of people on that program, right? So this is one of the benefits that you would probably get, right, from putting yourself out there and showcasing the awesomeness of who you are. And finally, I'd like us to all read this book. Um, you know, when I put it, I'm like, this is free advert, right? But I mean, this is a book, it's an old book. And the, but the only reason why I put it up here is because I've not seen any newer book, right? That speaks to the future, the digital future that we would see ourselves in, right? This book was written in 2019, but some of the things that she even talked about here have not happened fully i mean we, we've not explored it right so the benefit of reading this book is you you also get a big picture of where technology is evolving and more particularly why it's important for you to dominate um showcasing your person right on linkedin if you're not able to make the connection when you read the book read this book just send me a dm and then we'll talk about it but you'll see the connection of how technology is going to evolve, right? I don't want to some, start talking about the book, but it's important. And so you'll now begin to see the importance of personal branding and the importance of showcasing yourself out there. I know a lot, especially as women, we don't want to talk. We don't want to show ourselves. We are humble. We are, I know all of that. Like I said, I am there. Not that I've been there. I am there. It's still a struggle for me sometimes to even... Uh, put myself out there, but thank God for some people who will push me. Um, 
Yeah, so you need to, we really need to showcase ourselves. We need to showcase what we're doing. We need to showcase our thought leadership because we're just awesome, right? I hear somebody saying, Shay, this is not what we came for. It's important that we understand these basics, right? Because, and I'll talk about some more basics, right? Because when we get into the meat of where we now open LinkedIn and we'll work, you, you understand the reason why all of this foundation is important. The reason why some people pay some shitloads of money for LinkedIn optimization is because they don't go through these basics, right? Technology is garbage in, garbage out. LinkedIn is what you put in is what you will get, right? But there needs to be that foundation that you need to build that does not happen on LinkedIn. And this is why I'm taking my time to talk about all of this now. All right. So I'd like us to do a small, I want to have an idea of, uh, you know, um, the, the demography, right, of everyone who is here so that it will speak to the kind of examples that I use as we go along. So please go to slido.com and put in this code, S-L-I-D-O. I think, I, I think you can see it on the screen, S-L-I-D-O.com and put in the code 7610250. Amuli, thank you for your comment. You said sometimes it's not even the shyness of humility. It's knowing what and how to put it out. And that is why it's important that you, okay, no, you need to know who you are. You need to, you need to call for a personal branding. And this is not uh, marketing, but content is easier when you have a, a clear idea of what your personal brand is and who your audience is and what you're communicating to them. Do you understand? It, it's, a, it's just so easier. And uh, we have a lot of tech tools that just will give you your content, you know, in less than five minutes. So creating the content is now not an issue, right? Um, that's like another class on its own. But yeah, creating content is... Yeah. The code is 7610250. Yes, Adele, you cannot be hidden. You cannot be hidden. You need to shine your light. Arise and shine for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. You have to shine. Privacy. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I understand what you mean by privacy. A gathering of shy women taking over the world. Yeah, we are shy. We are shy like that, but we'll take over the world. I'm really passionate about women, really. Shy, shy, shyest. Governor, I see you, I hear you. <laughs> I'm following you, you know. <laughs> so Taiwo says he's always had, um, and this is a he, it looks like a he, he's always had reservation about open to work. I can tell you it does not work. It does not work. I've tested it on someone and it does not work. You will get a lot. What will happen with the open to work thing? I can, I can tell you whilst I wait for more people to feel this. What would happen when you put on the tag of open to work? A lot of people will see your posts. As you're posting, people will be liking it. That she, she, nothing will happen. <laughs> so that's what we'll do. And because you're getting a lot of traction, especially on that open to work post, if you've been hitting like 10 views on your post before, you get like a hundred views on that particular post. And then you'll be feeling very excited and very, uh, very, very, very cool with yourself. I'll explain to you the algorithm. So we'll look at LinkedIn algorithm towards the end. I'll explain to you why that algorithm will work against you. All right. So yeah, so this is it. We have 59% who are career professionals and 30% um, who are both career professionals and entrepreneurs. And we have 10% who are open to work and 2% who are entrepreneurs. Ah, I don't have entrepreneurs yet. It's all right. All right, let's move on fast because we have a lot to cover. And so, yes, let's now look at the basics. Please hold on with me. I know you cannot wait Someone is writing on my screen. Please uh, be kind. Don't uh, let's so that this, this, all, all the graphics that I put there can be looking very fine. Please don't don't write on the screen. Thank you. All right. So basics and in basics, we are going to look at a number of things. Right. We would look at 
the why, the who, the what, and the how. And this is important. You cannot just get into LinkedIn and start posting. You cannot just go into LinkedIn uh, without knowing some basics, right? So let's get into get the basics. And the first thing I always ask, okay, so this is the, the slide I have on this. And let's, let's look at it. The first thing you need to ask yourself is, why do I want visibility on LinkedIn? Why do I want vis visibility on LinkedIn? Because it's fundamental to everything that you are going to do. And it's also important to note that your why will change over time, depending on what season of life that you are in. At some point, your why will be that you want to, you're looking for a job. At other times, your why will be that, oh, you want to expand your network. As other times, you're looking for a board position and you want to build your credibility. At other times, for the very few entrepreneurs here, you want to get sales leads. So your why is important. Is it for visibility? Is it for networking? Do you want to showcase your thought leadership, which I believe every woman or man in leadership must do? You need to demonstrate thought leadership in whatever industry and in whatever field that you hold yourself in. If you look at my career, and um, now, I mean, if you look at my, uh, I've, I've said I've done HR uh, and strategy for a while, you'll see that there's a lot of posting and a lot of thought leadership that I've demonstrated on HR and HR matters, right? Um, in recent times, I mean, there's a, I still do not do enough. I actually don't think I do up to 10% of what I should be doing, right? So this is a situation of, Doctors being the worst patients, but bear with me. Uh, I would, uh, I mean, this, this is for me, it's time, right? And for me, it's also value. You also need to, uh, what phase of life are you in, right? So, why are you posting? That defines everything. It defines who you connect with, it defines what you post, it, it defines the contents that you engage in. Apologies. It defines the content that you engage in. And then the next thing you need to define is who are you? You see these three word sentence is so important to anything that you're going to do on LinkedIn. Who are you? I started the presentation by saying who I am. I am someone who empowers individuals and institutions to maximize their potential. And I do that through coaching, consulting, authoring, speaking engagement, and my social enterprises. Everything that you see that I do or say or speak or write will be around this. So who are you? Or who do you want to position to be? You didn't hear that part. But LinkedIn is about positioning, even if you are not it. In this day and age, um, uh, perception is greater than reality. So who are you? Who do you want to position to be? And who are you called to? You see, those three things, you need to understand it before you start anything on LinkedIn. All right, so let me go to the posts and yes, yes. So yes, personal branding will help you for exactly to give you clarity in your content. Because of, question is, why, why are you posting? Are you posting because everybody's posting, right? So if you're posting, your posts have to connect and align with your personal brand. Don't post because everybody's posting. Don't waste your time, right? Because at every point in time, you need to ask yourself, what's the return on investment on this, my posts? The return, return on investment may not be monetary, right? But you need to ask yourself, what do I want to gain with this posts? So it's not just posting. Yes, people are complaining of full capacity. Yes, we've reached 100, 100 people on this, on this call, unfortunately, and this, uh, license only allows 100 people. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about that. Uh, yeah. 
Okay, so a lot of people are talking about content creation being the crux, and I've explained to you why um, content creation is the problem, because you've not sat down to do a personal branding assessment, right? A personal branding, a definition of what, what, who, of the who's, right? Who are you? Who do you want to position to be and who are you called to, right? So, yes, yeah, so I've taken all the comments. Thank you. All right, and then last, um, next thing is then what? What do you want to communicate, right? If are you posting, I had mentioned that I talked about this earlier, what do you want to communicate to your audience? And if you're looking for board roles, you are, you are looking to speak to senior executives. If you're looking for a job, you are looking to speak to recruiters. If you're looking for thought leadership, you are looking to speak to industry experts. So what your what is not dependent on the who. So we're starting with the why. So my next step starts with why. So you start with the why, go to the who, who are you, who do you want the position to be, and who are you called to? And then the what. The what will come naturally and easily once you've understood the who. There's still space for one more person. So whoever is trying to log in, uh, sorry, one, we're 100 now, we've maxed out, right? So, um, and then the how. Now, how now then talks about style, right? How do you want to communicate with them? There are different ways in which you can communicate. You can use videos, you can use um, polls, you can use articles, you know. Um, LinkedIn has posts, articles, videos, events, and some other sub subcategories. So how do you want to, how do you want to put your content out there? I always recommend a combination of both. So sometimes your carousels get the greatest engagement, right? And then polls also, no, 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 carousels is the top engage, uh, engaging um, uh, tool, right? If you, if you put out posts using carousels, you get a lot of engagement. If the next is videos, um, the next is I think next is either text, text, and and then polls, or maybe polls and text. But the first two, right, is carousels and videos, and understandably videos because a lot of people um, like to watch and prefer to watch videos than to read. And now all of this will not fit into your LinkedIn profile, and then this will not then fit into your content and your engagement. Okay, I'm more fast. All right, so set up. At this point, do we have any questions? Let me take any questions because I'll be going off um, to go onto LinkedIn now. Let me take any questions. Ooh. Okay, no questions. Yeah, hello, there is. Good morning, Ma. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, thank you very much. Now for the what, I want to understand, is it what you are doing? You talked about video, you talked about article. For instance, if I'm someone who um, engages in training, is this some of the um, trainings I've done videos or um, and photographs of what I am doing? Is that what I'm going to put up out there? Okay. So I want no, to understand the, that. The what refers to what content are you going to put out there? And the what would, de would depend on the why. Why are you on LinkedIn? Do you want to get customers? If you want to get customers, then yes, you, if, you, if you run a training agency, you want to showcase clips of some of the sessions that you have facilitated. Or if you're a trainer, right. friends, you want to showcase that, whoa, you're an awesome facilitator. You know, showcase clips of you facilitating and write a story around it and just clips so that you're also not giving out all your content, right? So you, you, okay. so that's the what. The what is now what you put in there. All right. Thank you very much. All right. And thank you too. Um, can you see my LinkedIn profile? Can you see my screen? Yes, we can, but we can only see your PowerPoint. Oh, okay. So new share. Yeah, you can see set up LinkedIn profile set up as well. Okay, you can see it now. You can okay. see it now. Fantastic. All right, so now this is where we'll not get into the setup. Are we ready? 
I need some love in the chat yes, box. Yes, yes. Give yes, me yes, energy. Yes. My love language is engagement. So yeah, give me energy. Energy, energy, energy. Woo, 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 woo. Woo -hoo. All right. Good. So we're not going to look at setting up your profile. And this, we're going to look at the different parts of the profile on LinkedIn and why it is important. Okay. And what you need to do at different points. Oh, I mean, depending on what your position is to be. So the first thing is your, let's leave the background first. The most important thing is this picture here, your picture. Please, 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 as much as possible, I always advocate that you have a professionally taken headshot because it speaks volumes to who you are. And especially as women in leadership and men in leadership, right? Because like I said, there's some men here. It's important that you take a professionally taken headshot that shows your eyes. We want to see your eyes. So don't put a headshot that is showing the side of your, of your face because there's something about connecting with the eyes. So you want to take a headshot that shows your eye. It's important. With as much as possible, I mean, if, it, if it's a professionally taken headshot, the background will be plain. And then the next thing is your background. Is this is it is it called background? I don't know what it's called, but yeah, this this part I can't remember. The name just skipped my head. This part is called the background, right? I think someone is helping me with it. Banner, yes, thank you. Banner, banner, thank you. Now this banner is critical and important, and it is real estate that you want to use. Oh, don't forget your LinkedIn profile is your real estate. Right, so you have to, and it's real estate that you don't have to pay for. Well, technically, uh, there's a subscription part, but we'll talk about that later, right? So it's real estate. So see this banner, it is important. Whatever you put in this, but a lot of people do not use this banner and you are just wasting land. It's like you have land that you're not using that you're not converting to cash. So what do I advise people to put in their banner? You need to put something that showcases your work. This is my logo. And you'll see this anywhere, everywhere. Sometimes I put pictures um, that showcases what I want to talk about per time, right? Um, but I've just decided, I can't stress myself. I just leave it as my logo. That's so, um, let me see. Let me open some other profiles of some people, some of my friends. Let me check out the uh, governor's profile safe. Let me see. <laughs> I know she has she had real estate on LinkedIn, so let me. <laughs> okay, you see our governor's banner. Just put it there. Deborah David, author, speaker, and coach. Your LinkedIn banner needs to speak, is real estate, use it. What do you want to tell the world? What do you want to showcase to the world, right? Let me look for someone else's trouble. Who else? Ngozi Akinyeli. I know she's on this call. Aha, see. Ah, Ngozi, let's close it. So let's. But you see her picture, right? You see how beautiful her picture is, right? You need to look for something simple, professionally taken that speaks to who you are. All right, so the next thing is your name. Um, as much as possible, please use your, um, your name. Some people, I don't know why they do that. They don't use their mm -hmm. name. So, 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 Right. So if you do not use your full name, you are uh, reducing your visibility or the probability that you'll be found on LinkedIn by using another name. So please use your name right now, depending on what 
part of the world that you are in, right? Uh, you want, you may want to consider using pronouns. Uh, we live in interesting times and I'm just going to stop at that. But what is important, you see the side underneath your name, which is your about section is, it is the biggest part of your real estate on LinkedIn. And there are different ways in which you can use this. I've also created a checklist that I'll be sending across to everyone uh, sometime within this, um, this um, session, which talks about all the different parts and what you need to do. So it's a checklist, right? But I just wanted to show it. You see, this is real estate. And what do you want to do with this? You want to put in keywords, keywords that you can be searched for. So when someone searches for women empowerment, my name will co come up first. Because like I say, I've been called to women. That is my purpose in life, to empower women, to build an army for the end time, women. That's my calling, right? So that's why it comes up number one in my keywords. So once you type in women empowerment, anywhere, anywhere, my name will come up first. And then executive director of Pairwen, yeah? I'm a board member, keynote speaker. So these are the keywords that if people use if in the search box, they will most likely find me coming up in the first page. So you can either use keywords, there are different ways in which you can do this. You can either use keywords or use um, adjectives that describe um, what you wanna do, right? So you see some people who will say, I help, uh, I help entrepreneurs sell, I help entrepreneurs make more money, or I help um, accountants to develop their personal profile or their personal brand, or I help it. Bottom line, the, the code for that or the formula for that, exactly, that's the word. I help A and B to do X and Y, and then you put your title. Some people do that. I used to do that, but the challenge with that is that we live in a keyword driven world. And so keywords is what a lot of people will use to search for you. If I, let me go, um, if I show, um, if you look at governor's own, she also has her keywords put there. CFO, board member, top 50 women, those are keywords. But you know, you need to also use descriptive keyword because these are, what, what people will search for, the essence of this about section, what, what people will search for, use keywords that people will search for so that when they search for it, you come up, right? If you look at Ngozi's own also, you would also see that she's using keywords, brand marketing and communications leader, c executive, board member, speaker, mentor, XKPMG. You know, it's a fly. <laughs> okay. So yeah, and then yeah, she and the um, organizations she works for also show show forth, you know, in her in her um, in her bio. Fantastic. Are we good till now? Let me see the chat. I need to move fast. Is there an ideal number of keywords to use? Well, there's a maximum amount of keywords and uh, of. Um, the length of words that you can put there anyway. Um, but I don't think there's there's a maximum. Just try and exhaust, um, exhaust the space that you have. It's real estate. Gozia, please go ahead. Good morning. Good morning. Um, let me, first of all, let me say thank you for the session. Um, I just have a question as regards um, the who you spoke about previously. Okay. okay. So um, you said who is who you are or what you want to do or who you want to position to be or who you are called to be. So my question is, for someone with limited experience um, and um, still trying to navigate which career sector he or she wants to, to venture into or to explore, how do you advise such person to position himself in, or his, himself or herself in terms of who or who he or she is in uh, profile. Okay. So I still think that it's important for you to identify who you are. Because see, eh, it's not every job that you want now. 
Do you get? It's not like all the jobs. There are certain kind of jobs that you are looking for. Now, what I would say to people looking. So, if I want to be, I cannot. I studied accounting, but I cannot do. I cannot be a CFO in my life. But let's just imagine, for whatever reason, that I sleep and I wake up tomorrow and I say I want to be a CFO. So what will I do? I will go to Deborah's profile. See, ah, she's CFO. Okay, what are the things that she has? But I don't just look at Deborah's profile. I'll look at all the other people who are also CFOs. I'll look at their profile. What are the, the things they have, right? What are what part of those things do they have? Um, how do I speak this English now? What are some aspects of the things that they currently have that I also have? Okay. And I put it there. Sometimes you have those things, but they are not spoken in the English that the experienced yeah, people put it. Okay. You get so you then look, but you need to be put, you cannot be everything, like I say, you cannot be everything to everyone. And you cannot be positioning for all the kinds of jobs. The way you position for a HR role is different from the way you position for a marketing role. It's different from the way you position for a tech role, for instance. So you need to know who you are, who you want to be, or who you're positioning to be, and who you are called to. You still have to define it. Even if you are in the early, um, early phases of your career, you still need to know that. Because you know, if you don't stand for anything, you just you fall for everything. Oh, okay. is that, I'm not sure if I'm saying it right, but you need to be clear on what direction you are in. Okay, so um, I have a follow-up question on that. What if the person has like um, maybe two or three careers in mind trying to explore? How do you um, suggest the person um, look, look for a way to that, sync it up? To sync it up. Okay. Look for a way to and, sync um, it up. There's a way you can tell the story that will sync everything up. But whatever it is you are doing, it has to it has to connect into one particular thing. So, for mm -hmm. instance, take me. I'm into entrepreneurship. I have experience in HR. I do strategy. But all of it is combining into one thing: helping individuals and uh, and institutions to succeed. Okay. So you need to look for a way to you know. I, I sense that you're a multi potential light. You are you are skilled in so many things. Don't worry. It's a it's a burden, right? <laughs> I understand, but you just need to look for a way to sync everything together. Oh, uh, thank yeah. you. Did I uh, ask last, you? last question. Okay. What if at the point in time you just decide to change the trajectory of your career? For example, maybe you are in um you're in HR today and you know, some at the point in time you started doing something more of strategy and you want to move into that. Um, is it advisable you keep changing those things frequently? or just once in a while? Your, your life changes, though. Your life changes. If you look at my profile, I was once in HR. I used to talk about HR. I moved to strategy. I used to talk about strategy. I moved to entrepreneurship. I talk about entrepreneurship. I also talk about tech. Hello? Thank you very much. OK. OK. All right. Hello? Uh, all right, so I'm, I'm moving on quickly, right? So uh, you need to put in your keywords or put in what you do. And then there's something called creator mode. Um, because I already have it on, I don't know how to. Okay, so let's do this. If you have your LinkedIn profile, it's also good for you to just click it and open it up so that you, we are doing this you know, together. So if you click on this edit, this um, pencil here, if you click on it, it will give you option to edit all your information. All right, so it shows um, your basic info that I've shown to everyone. So this is my first name, my last name, my maiden name right, that I put there. And the reason why I put it there is because a lot of people know me with my maiden name. I don't know, for whatever reasons, before I got married, even though, yes, we married for many years now, but some people still call me Sheyi Manua. So for those people, if you type in Sheyi Manua, it will still bring up my name, right? Okay. So um, this is my headline. This is a place where you put in all your keywords. And then my current position, because you can only put one, I've put uh, executive director at Pan-African Women Empowerment Network, right? You can also add as many as you want. But because for me, my primary, um, the primary thing I want to showcase is the fact that I'm an advocate for women empowerment. I'm only putting my pay when work there. All right. 
And what else? So you put in all your basic information. There's something I want to showcase here. Um, and then you put, if you have a website, it's good for you to put in your website. Because like I say, your website is your owned media, is what you own. If you go to my website, it is my own. LinkedIn can determine who sees your post or who does not see your post, who sees your profile or who does not see your profile. If they are angry with you, they can ban you. They can do anything at any point in time. So please, leaders, leaders, please have your own website. And you know, they are, they are very, uh, I mean, if you watch any of the videos that I did for um, Tech Tips Thursday for Women in Leadership last year, I showed how you can have a website, right? For as little as less than $30 a year. But I still also advise that you have a full-fledged website. All right. So this, what I'm trying, I'm looking for is a part where, sh where it shows creator mode. Okay, so it's not here. And we'll move, we'll move on. I'm sure it will be somewhere here. Uh, more. I think, is it more? Okay, so that's fine. Now I'm in, I'm positioning, my profile is showcasing that I'm providing services and that is why you would have this here. But if you are not providing services, um, you can always set it up, um, set it up as uh, just a regular. So let's look at this. If we look at uh, Deborah's own, you'll see that here she has, um, Okay, she doesn't have anything. So because I, I'm, I'm providing a service, I've set up mine as um, I'm providing services in terms of coaching, consulting, and speaking, right? And you see it here, executive coaching, leadership development, public speaking. Those are the services that I offer. And you will see that on my profile. Um, okay, so next is... Okay, so these are analytics, right? Okay, yes, this is what I was trying to. If you go to your profile, there's a place where you will see this in terms of resources and you see that it's private to you. Now, the only reason why you can see this is because I'm, show, I'm highlighting um, my own LinkedIn profile, which you would probably would not see if not for this session, right? I always like that, especially if you want to build thought leadership, put on creator, excuse me, Put on creator mode on. What it does is that it amplifies the number of people who see your LinkedIn, uh, your posts. Because you've already said, look, I'm a creator, I'm creating content. LinkedIn wants creators to be on there, on there because they want. Now, don't forget, every platform is looking for um, mind space, right? They want to capture your attention as much as, as possible. So even them indicates to LinkedIn that, look, I'm a creator, I'm creating content that will make people, that will make LinkedIn capture more attention. They are going to push your post to more people. And then you now then write on, um, when you click on it, you can write on what are the things that you talk about. So if you click on resources, there are a lot of other things that are there, right? And so with these resources, you can use it to boost up your, um, your profile. But ladies and gentlemen, these things are important. It's important for you to, you see this because when you go to anybody's LinkedIn page, this is the first thing you see. When we went to uh, Governor's uh, LinkedIn page, that's the first thing, that's the first thing you'll see, right? It's important, it's real estate, use it, right? Um, there's the notification bell on, right? So if I click on notification bell for, um, uh, for Governor, anytime she posts something, I will get alerted, right? On my phone that she's posted and so and that also happens you, you won't see it here on mine because this is me looking at my own right but you'll see it for other people so this is real estate let's now go on to the next the most important and the underused real estate on linkedin that people do not use it is your featured section oh sorry there's one other part it won't show on mine because of i'm, I'm providing services you see this about section use it, consider it your five minutes pitch, your opportunity to, you know, to have a five minutes pitch to 1 million people. Who are you? And you see, if you, that's why I say, if you've not gone back to do the work of why are you posting? 
Who are you? What do you want to post? You will struggle with this about section because this about section is now a summary of all the work that you have done in defining why do you want to post? Because the why you, it, will, it will show here why you're post, what you want to achieve. Are you looking for board roles? Are you looking, and please don't make, I mean, if you're looking for board roles, I mean, if, or if you're looking for a job, don't make it too, too explicit. Instead, talk about the value that you bring on board. In your about section, talk about value, talk about interest, talk about pedigree, what you have done in the past, right? Um, so it's very critical that, you know, you, and you have a finite amount of space to do this. So this is not a place to not put your CV, no. You need to take time to write about you, right? Okay, so the next um, is a featured section. And here you showcase, um, this is where you build your credibility. If one of the reasons why you're on LinkedIn, which is really should be one of the reasons why you're on LinkedIn, is to show credibility, then this is where you need to show your credibility. And if you see in my featured section, the first thing you'll see is my website. So my website, so if you click here, it's a link, it takes you to my website directly. Right, uh, let me quickly do that. Yes, it takes you to my website. Uh, let me go back. Oh, okay. So the next thing that you see on my feature section is the post where it shows that Paywen, our organization, was recognized as the only charity in Nigeria driving financial inclusion for women. All the people who were nominated for these awards were either banks or financial or financial institutions. So, I mean, the list, they had a list of about eight people, Access Bank, imagine people competing with Access Bank for award. Of course, Access Bank won, but it showcases the impact of, of our work at Paywen and driving financial inclusion for women here. So that is the next featured section. The next is a punch editorial where I was featured to talk about why investors should fund women-owned startups. And I talk about the gaps that we have for, um, for funding for women in Africa generally and why investors should, because I mean, according to the AFDP, there's a $42 billion funding gap between men and women. Why? Who did we offend? Why are you not investing in us? And history shows that we are better managers of resources. So dear investors that are on this call, I know some of you are, please fund women businesses. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and then next um, is also credibility that look, a, uh, an event took place and I was one of the speakers. Um, the next post talks about awards that I have won and all of that. So if you click on all features, so this feature section is real estate for you showcase your work and you can put anything here you can put external links you can put a post you can put uh, anything you want to put but just showcase the awesome so that people who are looking at it will have an idea of what you have done you are building credibility with this your featured section thank you all right and then you are now then uh, you then go on to your post we'll talk about content later so i'm just going to skip this and then, uh, okay, this is my own about section. It's coming down because I'm, I'm, I'm a service provider. And then you cannot then look at the experience, right? Um, now my experience was not properly done, right? I didn't have time to edit this, but your experience should now then showcase everything that you have done, right? If you're looking for a job, it's good to talk about the achievements that you have achieved in each of these roles. Right, but if you are not, it's just okay to just put um, uh, your role, um, the organization, and the tenure right in which you were in this role. So I've talked about I'm um, in my work with Paywen. I'm a business mentor for Lloyd's School of Social Entrepreneurship, and also the UK um, Association of Business Mentors in the UK. Um, my man, I was a managing director. Uh, I mean, all, all my experiences are there. So it's important that you put your experience and if you're looking for a job or if you're positioning for a board role, you, you then put the strategic things that you have done. 
All right, so we go to education, right? Where you put in all your degrees. Um, and it, this is pretty much straightforward. Just putting your degrees, what um, I mean, this organization, the school, um, the course you studied. And yes, I put a distinction. Everybody needs to know that I graduated with distinction, please, so that you give me, you know, my accolades. But um, also use your education um, and then licenses and certifications also put it there. Whatever licenses that you have, whatever certifications that you have, please ensure that you put it there. Volunteering, volunteering is big, especially in the developed world. So if there's any volunteering role that you, you do, I mean, please put it there so that people show that beyond just um, working for money, you're also committed to certain courses. I need to update this. Um, yeah, and then you then talk about the skills that uh, you have. And then this is key. If you do not have recommendations, I've not done this in a long while, but, uh, and I'm gonna do it soon, right? Uh, you need to ask people that have worked with you that are willing to put their, um, their integrity at stake to say that, yes, this person can do this. So ask people to give you recommendations and you also give recommendations. Okay, so recommendations is people talk, telling the whole world and beating their chest to say, ah, I can vouch that. You see this person, who, she's the next best thing after God, right? It's good because it also helps you to build credibility. Moving fast now, um, and then you talk about your interest. And I think that's pretty much it. Once you do that, your profile is ready to go, right? But this will take a lot of, um, it will take a lot of time. I've just gone through it in, you know, very quickly, but it will take a lot of time if you are building from scratch. Let me look at the questions and then I'll go continue with my presentation. Can you please take us through how you got to the services I render? Oh, okay. Um, it's here. So, um, I mean, I've already opened, um, clicked on it, but if you click on your um, on your profile, if you're not on the services, it will ask you, are you rendering services, right? You'll see something, you'll see something like this, service page. So just click on it and then um, fill in all the details. All righty, um, so let's go back to the presentation and stop share. Uh, da -da -da. Sure. Was that useful? Answer feedback in the comment section, please. Was that useful? Is there anything you feel? Yes, please. It was. All right. Yes, it was. Okay, so we've looked at setup. So let's go back to it. Because a lot of what, I mean, whatever you put on LinkedIn is just a final product. A lot of what you need to do is outside LinkedIn itself. Okay, so I'll quickly talk about content, right? I mentioned that you need to understand your why, right? Why are you doing this? Why are you creating visibility on LinkedIn? Um, who are you? Who do you want to position to be? And who are you called to? Um, what? What do you want to put out, right? So you need to now look at what is your content object, uh, content objective? Why? Um, what do you want to achieve with the content? Are you building authority? Are you, do you want to make people laugh, right? Generally, I think I put it in a, oh no. I didn't, for whatever reasons, I didn't include that, sorry. Well, but whatever, uh, you need to have a content objective, right? Generally, I tell people that your, uh, your content must um, inspire or motivate. Your content must be educational. Your content must be entertaining, right? And, um, yeah, your content must also build thought leadership, right? You cannot have one content that will do all of this, no. But it's just that you mix and blend. So sometimes you just make people laugh, right? Just show something that makes people laugh, right? Um, tell something, uh, you know, that talks about what you do. And uh, particularly when you have trends going on, bringing your own source, bringing your own perspective, if everybody is shouting AI, 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 what are your own perspectives, right? If everyone is talking about um, whatever, jump on trends because you know trends make you your content also go further, right? We just like trends in Nigeria and generally in the world, right? So jump on trends and um, 
and position yourself as a thought leader. But it's not all trends that you jump on, please. Uh, you need to go back to your why. You know, every post that you put out there, you need to ask yourself, why am I putting out this post and what will it do for me? Right. There are some times that I put a post and I then I delete it later because I'm like, mm, no, this is not aligning with my brand. Right. And so what are your content pillars? So for me, if you see any content that I put out, out there is going to be either on entrepreneurship, is either going to be on tech, is either going to be on HR, or is it going to be on women empowerment or fintech and financial inclusion? Those are my content pillars. Anything that you see any way is around that. Right. And then there are different content types, like I mentioned before, you have posts, you have articles, you have videos, you have polls, you have events, there are different content types. So use um, a combination of all the different content types. Don't just be doing post, 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 posts. Yeah. Um, a lot of people don't do articles. And especially if you want to build thought leadership, you need to write artic articles. Now, articles are longer longer versions of, so they're like your newsletters, right? So it's articles are, is a good way, you know, to showcase your thought process and how you think or what you, um, what, what your opinions about a particular area, a particular field is. The power of storytelling, you need to learn how to tell stories. People love stories. So whatever it is that you're going to do, that you're going to tell, Look for a way to tell, weave a story around it. And, but it's not always. Sometimes you just go to straight to the point and slap them with the content. It's okay. But uh, as much as possible, look for ways, look for opportunities to tell stories because we are, we like stories as human beings. And then always, always put a picture with your posts. The sad reality is that the kind of pictures that will get attention are. Uh, fine face, fine, okay, you yeah, are going for vacation or you've just taken a professional headshot or you are just looking fine and dapper. You see, if you put a post, no matter what you write in that post, people will like that post because of the picture. So if your aim is to get a lot of engagement, you know, on a post, you want to also look for a picture that goes, that's, that, yeah, you're yeah, looking fine, you know, your baby get picture as the governor will say, right? Put your baby girl picture and if you're a guy put your handsome dude picture you know there um another picture that i see and i don't understand why but food right once people see pictures of food i don't know one of my best performing contents was the picture where i put evergonia and beans and evergonia and bread right and i was the con the content was totally unrelated to that right but the way people were just consuming that content, but I was happy because I was also passing a message, right? Um, but you just need to ensure that whatever picture that you're putting, and there's a correlation with what you're saying so that um, you don't look, but yeah, but generally, sharp. personal pictures where you're having fun, looking good, and food pictures always get a lot of engagement. And so I've talked too, too much about sharing your expertise and thought leadership most important thing is that when you're sharing content, ask yourself, who am I called to and how will this content benefit who I'm called to? If you're adding value to people or you're teaching people how to do new things or you're informing them of new ways to do things, you constantly get engagement. And then LinkedIn post is very great for engaging your audience. I've actually never done LinkedIn posts. I just never needed it, right? But LinkedIn posts are actually good. And the role of hashtags. Okay, so what hashtags do is to boost the reach of your posts. However, let us not overdo it. The algorithm says maximum of three. Well, there are ways in which you can go around the algorithm, right? I'll talk about it later. But if you are doing a post that you're just leaving to the algorithm to push um, as much as possible, minimize it to the three most important hashtags, right? And then there's something that a lot of us do not use is LinkedIn learning. If you, you, I realize that the more you engage with LinkedIn learning, the more they push your posts. Secret sauce. But apart from you using LinkedIn learning to boost um, visibility, there's a lot of free knowledge on LinkedIn. Please, why not use it now? 
use it, free learning, and they're delivered in bit size. So most of the courses there, you can take them in 30 minutes or less, you know? So, I mean, we live in a knowledge economy. Please learn a lot. There's so much you can learn on LinkedIn. So please, there's a lot of value in, um, in LinkedIn learning. Um, all right, let me look at the questions now because before I go into the growth hacks. All right, no questions. Okay, so growth hacks, um, and this is connections and content. Now, when it comes to content, I always say quality over quantity. Quality over quantity. Um, it's not, LinkedIn is not like Instagram. Instagram wants you to post like five times a day. No, LinkedIn, Optimum is post every 18 hours, unless you know you are jumping on a trend or the thing is hot and burning and all of that. Try as much as possible not to post within. Don't, don't allow the time space between two posts to be less than 18 hours, right? So that um, you get the visibility. And then in terms of content, quality over quantity, quality. Because don't forget, people are assessing you based on you know, your content. Okay, so growth hacks number one. I've talked about identity so many times in this session. You need to know who you are. Um, I mean, your who. Second thing is authenticity. Now, even though LinkedIn has its all sort of uh, annoying algorithms, right? The best performing posts are authentic posts. Posts that speak to who you are, what you stand for. Just speak, speak your truth as it is. I think some of us, we are sometimes always too conscious about what people will think of us and how people will perceive us. Just be authentic. You'll be shocked that it's your authentic post that will bring opportunities to you, right? Try and allow yourself to be vulnerable to some certain degree, right, on LinkedIn. But most importantly, be authentic. Consistency. You cannot post every day for in one month and then go on sabbatical leave on LinkedIn for like one year and then come back and think that, I ah, know your audience will be there for you. No, you're going to start from uh, you know, ground zero. So consistently post, right? I know we are all busy, right? And I'll share what I do much later, right? Connection, you're on LinkedIn to network, connect with other people, send, don't, don't be feeling big, right? To say, ah, no, I'm not, they are going to connect with me, no. Send connection requests, connect with people. We are there to network. The more people you know, the more your, the wider your network. You are only as rich as your network. We've heard all these buzzwords, but they are true. Try and form connections on LinkedIn. When you see people, reach out to them. It's amazing, you know. In pay when I said that we have a faculty of over 70 people. Some of our faculty members teach businesses in Silicon Valley. Yes, and how did I get them? I got them on LinkedIn, right? There's a particular um, author who's, I mean, well-known, especially in the entrepreneurship space, right? His book has been translated into, I think, about nine languages. He's actually, I mean, he's a thought leader when it comes to entrepreneurship. And the other day I reached out to him. I mean, I like, you shoot your shots now. The worst thing you say is no, right? Yeah. So I sent out a message to him that, look, I'd like you to come and take this particular session for Pwen. And he responded, and of course, before he responded, he went to look at my profile. Who is this woman that is having the audacity to send me such a message? And then looked at the profile and looked at it and said, look, okay, you see, I see that you are not for profit. I do not do free sessions, God told me. But I know someone who's passionate about women and who will do this session for free. Mm -hmm. And then he connected me to, and he connected me to Silicon Valley. Today, I have... If I want anybody in Silicon Valley to come and take our sessions, as long as they are open to taking free sessions, right? They would facilitate sessions for us at Payway. So connect with people and just be genuinely interested in people. You know just how it is with physical networking, same with digital networking. Connect. Caution. Be careful the posts that you like, the posts that you forward, and the debates that you allow yourself to be drawn into. Let's be careful. Right. And yeah, I'd mentioned this to say your content should motivate, inspire, educate, entertain, or critique. And um, the critiquing part, I think we should uh, use our church mind, right? 
um, if it's not going to add anything to you or it's not going to position you as a thought leader, you don't need to critique. Let's leave everybody and allow everyone to, to but there are some people, right, that thrive up. If you're in politics or you want to do some, you know, show yourself, you know, yes, it's good for you to critique. In short, the more, especially when you're in opposition, right? You want to critique, you want to show that you have, hey. but if you're not in that realm or if your job doesn't involve, you know, those kinds of things, um, be careful about um, critiquing. Let me. If you send a connection request and the person does not, it's not, it's not, it's not the end of the world now. Uh -uh. It's not the end of the world, is it today? Maybe today now, you know how many people that have sent requests to that would look at me and say, no, you are not my audience, but that's okay. We move on, it's okay. All right, growth acts level two. All right, um, in your content, and this just has to do with content, right? Um, ensure that your content is valuable to your audience, right? Tutorial, for instance, are, are, are quite useful, especially if it's a tutorial that your audience um, uh, can relate with. Um, building authority and expertise. You know, you need to write concrete, be concrete in your position, right? If this is your position. For instance, there was a time when a mentor of mine is late now, may God rest in, uh, rest in soul, sent me a position, uh, an article on something about HR. And I looked at it and I said, I have on where to where. This is totally wrong, right? And then I wrote my, um, I, I sent my, um, you know, my my own thought to say, look, this position is not is not right. And I cited references, both scientifically and in terms of practice, what should be. I later found out that the person who wrote that particular article had developed a new solution that I was just trying to sell. So he now came up with something that just totally did not make sense, right? So, but a lot of people then started saying, oh, yes, yeah, Shay, thank you for this, Shay, thank you for that. Because, I mean, you also, and that's how you build thought leadership. You help people see through, because there's a lot of nonsense that is going on in terms of content, right? On, on, on social media and digital platforms. So you as a thought leader, it's an opportunity for you to showcase your expertise and let people, you know, show people the way, not online, right? And it needs to be easy to read. And that's why carousels are usually still the top performing post because carousels are, I mean, they are friendly to the eye, right? Secret in the ingredients, right? Right to draw emotions from people. Unfortunately, happy emotions is not the most, you know, when, when you're drawing emotions of how you've lost your job, you know, those kind of, you see those kind of posts, check it anywhere, they go viral. But I'm not sure, you know, if that doesn't align, I don't do any of that because it doesn't align with my personal brand. But if, you know, some people are just very um, big on the number of people that, um, that likes their posts, that share their posts, I'm not big on that. And this is where, uh, okay, and another secret, if you write on something controversial, yeah, it would generate a lot of attention, or you write something inspiring. My best performing posts were posts, I think one of my best performing posts is this little girl, yeah, where I just talked about, you know, you know, my background, how, how I came to be, right? And a lot of people, in short, a lot of people connected with me. They didn't even engage with the post, but they connected with me just because of that story, right? And so um, I wanted to say this here, right? In terms of content, a lot of people write content and they come and tell me that, look, um, Shay, um, people are not connecting, they're not engaging or they're not, you know, uh, and, and I'm like, first and foremost, you need to understand why you are posting on social media. Do you, if you want to be an influencer, then you need to be crazy about the likes and the, and the engagement and the repost and all of that. I mean, if, if that's what it is, but if you're not an influencer, it's quality over quantity. So when I post and I see CEOs and senior executives liking and commenting on my posts, I'm fine. I'm not for Bogboero. But if you want to do Bogboero, we will talk about that in the next slide. How, I mean, if you're really high on, you know, ensuring that, you know, your post reach so many people but it's also good i mean because the more people that see your posts the more visibility you get but the question i often ask is that who do you want to see your posts do i want um 
people who are looking for job to see my post. No, there are certain category of people that I want to see my post and as such, I'm optimizing for that, okay? Yeah, I've talked about diversifying your, all right. So growth hack number three. Now, this is where I talk about LinkedIn algorithm. So what LinkedIn does, and we're going to test it out here, right? I think, I mean, if you give me a few minutes, we'll test it out, right? Um, engagement grade, what LinkedIn does when you post something is that they'll first show your posts to your first connections. They'll, they'll take a sample. I don't know, some people say it's 100. I don't know what it is, but they'll showcase your post to a small sample. Now, depending on how people engage with that post in the first 90 minutes, it will not de determine whether you share it to other people, right? Did you get that? So when you post within the first 90 minutes, the number of likes and engagement and comments that you get determines the visibility that LinkedIn will give your posts. So if there's a certain post that you have put out there that you want, you really want people to see, you want to, um, to drive attention to it, I always suggest that you use offline engagement to drive that engagement. Because if you use, off now offline engagement is going to groups, going to your friends, my friend, my, I know people, in short, there are some certain people that I've seen on LinkedIn. It's like they have a, they have a WhatsApp group, right? When, any, when one person posts, in short, I, this, when one, one person posts, all of them will like comments and all of them, they're Indians, so they're not, they're not Nigerians, right? So they're Indian, so, some of them, I mean, mixed group, but a lot of them are, you know, uh, Asians, right? And it's like they have one WhatsApp group. I, I've come to that conclusion that that's what they do because you'll see that on any post, there's a circle of people that like and, put, and like, share, repost and all of that. So, uh, but they're all influencers. I mean, well, they, they try to be influencers and all of that because they use that to get money. So offline engagement. So don't, when you see someone that has 1000 views, there's a lot of offline engagement that happens. So don't feel bad. Second point is competition. Whether you like it or not, you are not the only uh, women empowerment person on LinkedIn. You are not the only CFO. You are not the only marketing person, right? So if you want to grow your connections and you know what I talk about, the quality of your connection. Now, if you want to grow your connections on LinkedIn, there are many ways you can do it. The cheap and not effective way is when you go for speaking, I mean, look for young people to speak to and then ask them to connect. I mean, younger people are very quick to connect but for me, it's not in the quantity, it's in the quality. So who are the people in your network, right? Because you know the algorithm would, if you have more, more students or people looking for work in your network, your, the LinkedIn algorithm will showcase your post to people who are similar to that. Do you get? But if you have more CEOs and you know business leaders and CISO executives and your on your connection list, LinkedIn algorithm will showcase your posts to more people like that. So go to your competition, look at the people that follow them and the people that know, and uh, um, look at their connection list and then follow, ask for connection requests. That's the way in which you can build the quality of your connections. Like I said, the quality of your connections matter a lot. That's why some people get board roles on LinkedIn and some others don't is in the quality of the connections, the quality of people who are seeing your posts, okay? I've talked about offline engagement and it's always good to repurpose your content. If you've seen a content that has done well, repurpose it. If you're even too lazy, just repost the post that you have posted before so that the people who have not seen it then will see it, you know? And that also helps to gain engagement. Um, Exactly. I mean, um, Keaton is Keaton is saying that yes, most people, um, most influencers do offline engagement. So at this point, I'd like us to try something out. I'd, I'd like you to ask questions, but whilst I ask questions, I'm going to put up a post. I've not finished the post, but I'm still going to post it anyway. I will post it and I'll share it in the link. And I want you to engage with this post. Now in the engagement, the role of this, uh, the purpose of this 
um, posts is that I also want everybody who is on this call to be able to showcase who they are. So I've created a post. I mean, it may not be complete, but I think it's almost complete. I'll make the edits later. Another thing I forgot to mention, when you post, even if you've made errors, please wait for that 90 minutes before you make, before you edit it. Because when you edit within 90 minutes, um, LinkedIn reduces the number of people that they showcase your post to. So whatever you do, do not edit within the first 90 minutes. Another thing you should not do is to as much as possible. Now, like I say, any LinkedIn algorithm can be canceled by offline engagement. Do you get, I mean, because LinkedIn algorithm just determines who showcases you, who, who sees your post. But if you take that out and showcase your post to offline engage, uh, 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 offline people, they will like your post, engage with your post. And then once LinkedIn says that, uh, uh, people are liking it. No, even if you've broken all their rules, they will still showcase your post, right? But if you want to lean only on um, LinkedIn algorithm, as much as possible, don't put links in your main post. We put the links in the chat. Because don't forget, every platform wants you to remain on their platform to get. So if you're putting a link on your post that is directing them to another platform, it reduces the number of people that see your posts. So if you are very crazy about, you know, a lot of people say, so most times I just put it, I really cannot be bothered. But yeah, if you, um, but at the point where I was in the phase where I wanted to grow my LinkedIn uh, connection, I would put, even in recent times, um, sometimes you'll see my, my, whatever link that I'm putting, I put it in the comment section, right? So use the comment section to put your links if you just want to depend solely on LinkedIn algorithm. What other things about LinkedIn algorithm uh, can I think of? But the good thing about LinkedIn is that the more you post, the better you become at it, right? It's just like everything in life. The more you do it, the better you become. And then you'll learn some tricks that you may also teach me because I'm also looking for people to, you know, to teach me how to improve on, on LinkedIn, right? Um, but yeah, that that is it. Just give me, please send in your questions and then I'll put a post out. Um, and okay, yes, I'll say now. So when I put out this post, right? Let me just even do that now. I want you to comment, but not just comment, you're commenting to introduce yourself. So it's one of the posts that I've seen a lot of people do. I've never done it. This is my first time of doing it, but it helps. So if you're starting out on your LinkedIn journey and you want to announce to the world that, hey, I have arrived. They call it reintroduction posts where and you'll see, you'll see a sample. So what I need you to do is to then introduce yourself in the comment section such that everybody who is on everybody's next, imagine we are 100 on this call, right? And we all have at least 500 people in our connections. And I'm assuming that they are quality connections. People will see your profile. So if you want um, people to see your profile, who you are, what you do, what you're passionate about, that is what I need you to comment in the post that I'm going to put out to. And let's see how viral this will go. Because the most important thing is that you want to showcase yourself to the world as the next best thing after sliced bread and butter. Right? So please, your, your questions in the comment section, and I'll just put up the post. OK, so let, whilst um, I'm waiting for, I see a question here. You're an IT person looking to change to backend technologies, and you've been learning some stuff. How does one put oneself out there to, and let potential uh, employers or general people know, know what you have learned? Share what you have learned. If you have learned how to, why well, are you are changing to backend technologies? If you have learned one particular code, right, share it there and share, uh, uh, include a link to your GitHub profile that shows what you have done. Share your learning and sure that's, thank you for this question because this is another beautiful, especially for people who are rising up the ladder, social learning, share what you're learning, share how you're developing yourself, share the, you know, I mean, those posts also are boosted by LinkedIn, right? So please share your learning, share that, ah, look, and it's one of the things we tell um, the people in um, the um, Tech of Africa community, right? We have a community of about 8,000 Africans, by the way. And, you know, share your learning. Oh, I've just finished um, data science with Python. Share it there. Share your certificate. Share, share the projects that you have done. Share your learning. Let people know that you know book. 
Ah, Jesus. Any tips about premium subscription? Okay, so um, LinkedIn is a business, right? And they're there to make money, right? If you can afford it, um, pay for premium subscription. It's, they boost your posts, right? They boost your posts more than people like us that don't, don't, not that I, I mean, so there are times, there are different times when I've paid, right? So if I have a particular objective, right? I want to be visible. I want to do it. I know that this month I want to do a lot of speaking or I want to really, really showcase myself. I'll pay for LinkedIn uh, premium subscription. But there are times when they have been chasing me. LinkedIn has been chasing me to for free, a premium subscription that I didn't even use it because at that time I didn't think it was of any benefit to me. So, you know, your what also always determines it, right? Right now they've asked me to come and to come and renew for free that they'll give me one month free subscription. I've not, I've not answered them because I'm not sure I really need it, right? Maybe by the time I need it, it would have gone, but it's okay, not a problem. But use a uh, premium um, when you, when you really want to, I mean, if you, if you're just started out now, you really want to put out a lot of content and a lot of go for, I mean, do the premium subscription, right? And then, because it helps um, push out your post. And then the beauty about uh, link and uh, premium subscription is that you get access to all the LinkedIn learning resources. I have access to the LinkedIn learning resources outside of my LinkedIn subscription. So that's why sometimes even the premium subscription doesn't add any value because, because of my university, I still have access to the LinkedIn learning, right? So I can learn everything that I want to learn, but not through my own LinkedIn account. All right, so if you want to connect with me, this, these are my details, right? Please, um, someone is raising up their hand. Please go ahead and speak. Hello, Ma. I want to understand the... Hi, Lara. I think... Okay, okay no, yes. I thought somebody else was talking. Okay. So my question is, um, um, thank you so much for the session. Last, sometimes last year, I made a post and uh, it was just, the, the engagement was crazy. I had over 11,000 engagements on that post. So my question is, I was excited and at the same time, I was confused on what I was supposed to do with it. So in my mind, if it was an Instagram, for example, I would have posted that post so that I can generate. So I was just feeling like, hey, see connection, see money on the, on the, <laughs> or, 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 I mean, money waiting for me to happen. But what do you think I should have done to engage more on those guys? And they were quality engagement, a lot of uh, senior execs. What do you think I should have done to actually optimize those views and engagement? It, it goes to your what, 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 what do you want to get out of it? At the end of it all, you get, so I don't know what you do, right? And I don't know why you post, but if you've had 11,000 on a post, what I can suggest you do, repurpose it. If you don't want to do anything, what you can do is just repost it. Repost it this morning, okay. right? Just repost it, right? And then see how it performs. Sometimes, eh? This LinkedIn algorithm just does not make sense. Sometimes you won't understand. You will do everything that you that you know you, you have to do. They won't boost your post. And then you break all the laws that exist and then the whole world is in your posts, right? But 99% of the time, right, the algorithm works the, and the principles work. Sometimes you just don't know. Sometimes you, you see, with posts, you can never determine a post that will go viral or not. But then I always ask people, why do you want your post to go viral? Are you marketing something? If you're marketing something and you want the post to go viral, fantastic. If you want to showcase that, ah, you just want an award and you want exactly is good. But let's always understand why we want the post to go viral. So that we don't, because we are leaders, right? We need to be careful how we expend our energy. Putting up a post, I don't know, for some people, it's, they can do the post in two minutes, for me, it takes me a while, right? To write a good post. So when I'm writing a post, uh, I want to make sure it's it's good qu good quality content for it. But you have to be consistent on LinkedIn. 
any other questions? And did I answer your question? Yes, you did. Thank yeah, you. So, so you can either repost it or repurpose it. So repurpose just means taking the same content. If you had put the content out in a text form, um, put it now, re, uh, restructure it and put it in a carousel form. Um, if you put it in a carousel form, use text or then just convert it to video. There are a lot of AI tools now that can help you convert your text to video. Or just, I mean, just look for an innovative way to jazz it up, right? And then post. So there are things about the best time for posting. I mean, there are a lot of articles online. There are a lot of um, stories about that. Generally, it's best to post between 10 and 12 a.m. Um, uh, sorry, 10 a.m. and 12 noon, right? Or, gen uh, or I mean, between two and four. That's what they say. I mean, the people, LinkedIn specialists, that's what they say. Me, I post as a spirit lead. But I've noticed that for my own post, my Saturday morning posts, I mean, go a long way. Um, but I've also not been able to, I've not been that inspired on, not that I've not been inspired. So I get that inspiration, but then the time to then just do the writing is not just there. So my Saturday morning posts um, do a lot. Um, they do well. Um, I am of the opinion that, look, people will not go on LinkedIn when they're supposed to be at work. The people that will be going on LinkedIn when they're supposed to be at work may not likely be the kind of people that you want to be seeing your posts. So I post, so today now, maybe I'll sit down, God will, okay, I've already sent to put out the post. I can't put anything out, but on a good day, if I had not just put out the post, maybe I'll just sit down for something inspiring and then I'll put, post. I believe that because today's a public holiday, for instance, in Nigeria, um, yeah, a lot of people will see it. But then I've also come to the point where I don't want to target, I mean, no offense, offense, but I'm, I don't live in Nigeria any longer. So I'm trying to build a network of people in the UK who will be seeing my posts, right? So I will post around UK timings, if that makes sense. Okay, so many questions. Bolanle and Enak, please go ahead. Bolanle Enang. Okay. Hi, yeah. I'm sorry. My phone froze for a second. Good afternoon. Thank you afternoon. very, very much. Please, I'd like to ask you two questions. You talked about the featured section, and I'm trying to navigate how to put that up on my um, on my profile, and I seem not to be understanding how to get that. That's number one. Then number two, did you talk about the frequency of posting? As in, we do that every every day, eighteen hours. No, don't let Maybe it be 18 hours. No, 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 no. Your posting should not be uh, the English. It, it must not be more frequent than every 18 hours. It must not be more frequent. Okay. Yeah. Okay. However, post at your convenience. See, because posting is also some work. So if, if you are only able to post once a week, please post once a week. Well, remain right. consistent. It, with right. LinkedIn, consistency trumps um, frequency. Right. So okay. consistency and um, quality trumps frequency. Mm. But I mean, rule of thumb, generally, three times a week will be fine. Right. But you cannot Thank do you it very much. It's just once a week. Mm. Okay. So the featured section, this is what you do. You just, so if you, Go to the posts that you want to. Okay, let me. I don't want us to waste time, but go to the posts that you want to feature and then right click. You see the three dots by the right. Just wow. click on it and it, um, uh, there's something about including feature section or something, something along those lines. You just say something. Right. Yeah, and then, but if you still don't get it, just send me, send me a DM. Then okay, we'll, we'll take thank it. you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yele, please. Um, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for this insightful session. Um, I've learned a lot. My question is about content creators, right? Um, I mean, people will do it um, at a paid, you know, for, for, for a fee, right? Um, you've mentioned severally in your, in your speech that 
it, it's tough to put up posts, especially if you're a very busy person. A lot of women are busy. There's there's family life, there's work, there's target to be made. You know, there's you, you know, to be taken care of. Yeah. <laughs> so so for me, um, when when I, like you said, if you want to put out quality posts, like it can really take time. Um, a lot of thought process and all of that. So I want to, I want to really be engaging on LinkedIn. But honestly, the time is just tough. I have a 10 months old that I don't have a nanny. I, I have a, a, an eight to five job, you know? And so recently I started thinking about it, that should I just hire someone, right? That would be helping me to churn out the content. But my challenge is who would write the way you would write? Like, would they be able to speak what's on your mind? And I was like, maybe I should just start at least, even if it's just for engagement, then when I have time, I take over. What do you think about that? Because you, you mentioned virtual assistant also. Please, I just want to know what you think about hiring a content creator to help you put out content. Okay. okay. So at some point, um, I'm going to stop the recording. <laughs>